Hello, hello everyone. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. And I got some time to play with my Magello Mission Gold watercolors. And I had this whole scene created in my head. So I started with some Canson Montval uh, watercolor paper that I had cut down to four and a quarter by five and a half, I'm pretty sure. And I coated it with my anti-static powder tool to start out. And then I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Falling Rain background stamp. And I inked up the stamp with Versamark ink. And then I'm pressing, I brought the watercolor paper to the stamp and then pressed it down really, really well because I'm working on the textured side of the watercolor paper and press that onto the stamp. And then I'm coating the stamped image with clear embossing powder, just over a coffee filter. So got it completely coated, tapped off the excess, and then got my heat tool good and hot and um, heat set this. And I plan on doing um, basically an emboss resist and then I plan on ironing this off. So when you're working with watercolor paper, especially, you want to melt the embossing powder just until it's melted. You don't want to over, um, overheat it because the embossing powder basically tends to start absorbing deeper and deeper into the cardstock. So melt the embossing powder and then I taped down that panel to um, just a piece of hard board and then I grabbed my Mission Gold watercolors which I just love when you open them like especially the bright side of it <laughs> with all those colors it's just so pretty when you open it up. So anyway side note there I get distracted easily. <laughs> I used my tile to mix up a few different shades of blue. At first, I just started with kind of just the colors as is. So I mixed up three different shades of blue, and then I got my little piece of paper tile there to hold on the bottom. And then I put something under the board because I wanted it to be um, on an angle so that the color would start to travel down. And again, I was experimenting with this. I'd never done this before. I had this idea in my head as I wanted the color running down to kind of simulate rain. Um, so you guys are seeing my very first attempt at this. So I had um, applied the color quite heavily with a very wet brush. This would have worked even better if I had a bigger brush. Um, I think the, I'm using my silver brush here and the biggest size I have right now is a size six. So this would have worked really nicely with like a size eight to a 10 um, sort of a brush, you know, something larger that could hold more color, but I made it work. And I was also spraying it with my, just my distress spray, like any spray bottle would work. But I got this super, super saturated. Like I worked with this super, super wet. I wanted the color just pouring down this. Um, yeah. And now that I've done it and looking back and like editing this video, this would have looked even better if I'd worked in layers. That's kind of what I should have done was, you know, let it dry and then added some more layers. Of color. I think it would look really cool, but that's something I'm still practicing with is that idea of, you know, work in layers, let them dry, you, you know, achieve that depth. But this still worked out. Um, I let it dry a little bit and then I sprayed it again with um, the sprayer just to create more of that rivulets of water coming down. And then I did set it aside and let it completely air dry. And then you can see how that intensity of color, it really, really lightens like a lot. So it works for my end result, but now I want to try this again maybe or do something similar and do the layers of color if you really want like an intense background. But for this, it worked. So I peeled it off, um, peeled off the tape and then I set it on top of a folded folded towel and then I have my iron which I think I've mentioned the last time I used this iron I use this iron just for paper crafting I do not iron clothes like who's got time for that <laughs> so I got the iron good and hot I keep it people always ask what setting you use honestly I keep it kind of at the middle um you got to experiment with your iron see what works but you put a scratch piece of paper over top and then you heat it with the iron I usually did about 30 second intervals and it absorbs it remelts and then that scrap paper absorbs the embossing powder so it completely removes it so you're left with with a piece of cardstock with all that emboss resist but no embossing so people kind of wonder like how on earth did you achieve that look so it's really fun so and it's nice too because it flattens out if it's warped if you've done watercolor with it, that technique um, it completely flattens out the paper at the same time so it's kind of a win-win so once I had done that I'd set it aside and then I've got some white cardstock here in my mini misty and these are the clouds and bird images from the Simon Says Stamp Cloudy Skies stamp set that I had um, got a few weeks ago specifically for this card like I just I've had this idea in my head and I had to make it I just I love this set I love clouds and rain images I don't know so I use my misty so I could stamp everything all at once and I use several different little memento dew drops to do this and then discovered in the process that my little tuxedo black ink one like I've had these dew drops for gosh six or seven years something um 
the black one is almost completely dried out. So it took a few stampings, which was nice with the Misty because I was able to just restamp them over and over again. But I stamped the clouds in different shades of blue and gray and I'd stamped the birds. And then I got out my Big Shot and I'm using the coordinating dies to die cut them all. So I just used some post-it tape to hold everything in place and die cut the three birds and the two cloud shapes all at once. And then I ran it through um, another couple times to die cut the remaining clouds that I'd done up. And then I just used one of my favorite things, Blueprints dies. I think this was the Blueprints one set. Where did I have it written down? Yes, Blueprints one dynamics just to die cut um, the watercolor background I had created. That's why I didn't worry about like the tape or anything like that because I knew I was going to die cut that piece. You could trim it too with um, your paper trimmer, like whatever works. And then I decided for the sentiment for the front that I wanted to stamp it directly onto this panel. So this is where the Misty comes in really handy because I wanted to make sure it was going to stamp perfectly after I went to all that work you know watercoloring the background and everything so I lined up the sentiment I just used this little grid sheet I will hopefully have that grid sheet linked in the supplies I get asked about that a lot and I inked up the stamp this time with Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink because that one's good and juicy and it stamps really well so I stamped it once and then I ended up stamping it a second time to intensify it um, a little bit and that's where this works better too by doing that um, ironing off all the embossing otherwise I wouldn't have been able to stamp that sentiment over top if those raindrops were still embossed and the embossing powder like the glossiness was still there the ink would not um, take very well to that so I'd stamp that and then I've got my card base here which is some um, Simon Says gray cardstock I'm not sure if I know exactly which one it's smoke cardstock I love this like shade of gray so I scored the card base so it's a standard a2 size card so four and a quarter by five and a half and then I grabbed the coordinating sentiment and these sentiments are from the inside and out saying stamp set I showed that a while ago I love that set I really really do it's just got like the perfect sentiments so I use the outside um, sentiment on the outside of the card and then I used this inside sentiment for the inside and I did the same thing stamped it twice onto the card base so that it was good and intense I just used baby wipes to clean off my stamps I've never had a problem with that in my misty and then set that aside and I had stamped and die cut a few more clouds just to finish off the inside because you guys know there's got to be something on the inside of the card like that's what people do they open up the card and look at the inside <laughs> so adhered a few clouds but left enough space to to write something and then I'm going to finish off now the outside of the card so I've got some black baker's twine and I wrap that around the top of the watercolor panel and then tie that in a bow and because this it's doodle twine so it comes on that little spool so it's kind of got that nice little like twist to it um, I left the tails really nice and long because I just love the way they're hanging down and then I kind of figured out how I wanted the clouds to go I didn't want to completely cover up this background obviously so I decided where I wanted to place the clouds and then I grabbed these little tiny these are 3d foam squares and used those to adhere the clouds to this watercolor panel and then I kind of laid out these stamped and die cut birds sort of where I wanted them and for these guys I used my Ranger multimedia mat to adhere. I could use the Tombow Mono Multi but because they're so tiny it was easier to use the matte adhesive with that fine tip applicator so got those into place once I was kind of happy with that placement just squeezed on a little bit of adhesive and got those all adhered and then I'm going to adhere this to the card itself with um, a generous amount of foam tape. I didn't have to use quite so much probably just because like I said with the ironing and everything this was perfectly flat so got it all adhered and that finished off the card so as always I will have a link below the video to my blog post there'll be links to all the supplies used any of that sort of info so check out the description box below if any of that interests you thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing commenting thumbs upping my videos I really really appreciate it and I will see you all very soon in the next one bye